Uh, anyway, Richardson, yeah, QB 16. It's just, I got. I was thinking about this last night. I was just so shocked after the NFL draft when you guys had your first run of rankings. That I, I'm pretty sure all three of you, the two of you and Heath, I think you all had Richardson as a top 12 guy. And I just never really thought people would do that, really. Um, back in April or early May, whatever it was. Uh, but you guys still have that. And drafters are not feeling the same way. So, Jamie, um, you got Richardson would be a great value if you could really get him at QB 16. Oh, my God. I mean, you know, and I, I think as we sort of alluded to yesterday with the, the group of quarterbacks that we talked about following Dak Prescott, you know, when you talk about Kirk Cousins and Aaron Rodgers and Russell Wilson and Geno Smith and Daniel Jones and all these guys, that if you compare them with Andy Richardson, you're in a really good spot. Um, for me, I think, you know, if you're looking for what Richardson can be, you're hoping for the legs of Justin Fields and the second year throwing of Lamar Jackson, because he's not going to be a 4,000 yard guy. That's just not. I think realistic, but if he can approach 3000 yards and still run for a thousand yards, he's going to, as we said about Lamar Jackson that season, break fantasy. And so that's the hope. Now, more realistically is, can he be a 2,500 yard passer and still run for a thousand yards? And I think that's doable. You know, so fields last year was 2250 right around there and 1200 yards rushing. You know, he just missed the, the rushing record that Lamar Jackson had. So Anything close to a thousand yards rushing, anything close to twenty-two, anything close to twenty-five hundred yards passing, uh, is going to put him in the top ten conversation. Especially if the touchdowns are, are are significantly different or close to you know a good enough margin where the the turnovers don't crush him. I looked this morning at the other mobile quarterbacks and like look at these projections. There's no way that that, that that's what happens. These projections are two thousand nine hundred thirty yards, seventeen touchdowns, twenty interceptions, with nine hundred and eighty-one yards and five rushing touchdowns which would make him QB 17. And I think people forget about the turnovers because you're not even seeing a, a fumbles projection here, but I would bet that there would be a lot of fumbles for Richardson, like a lot of these guys in their rookie seasons and the 20 interceptions, if that's re- and, I, and I could see him throwing 20 interceptions, you know, if he's going to play 17 games at quarterback, um, the turnovers could get him. But I just want to go through some of the other extremely mobile quarterbacks. I'm pretty sure that would only be the second guy ever to go 29 and nine. 20, what was it? 2,900 passing yards and 900 rushing yards. Because Lamar's the only guy to go 3,000, 1,000. Yeah. All right. So, so Michael Vick made only two starts. Cam Newton was a top five quarterback, both overall and per game. He was right around fifth as a rookie. And he had his best passing season ever. His most passing, his only season with uh, 4,000 yards, I think. Lamar Jackson, look at the seven starts he made as a rookie. He would have been per game the number nine quarterback in four point, the number 18 quarterback in six point. Um, Kyler Murray was 12th in four point, 14th in six point per game as a rookie. Jalen Hurts only made four starts. He got pulled early in one of them after the third quarter, but he was pretty good. He scored 20 or more fantasy points in all three of his of the games he started and finished. And Justin Fields was terrible. He wasn't even in the top 30. So it really runs the gamut from elite in Cam Newton to Low-end starter in Kyler Murray. Same thing with Lamar Jackson. I would say format dependent. Uh, Jalen Hurts, only four games, but very good. And Justin Fields, horrible. But, you know, the numbers that you're talking about with and Anthony Richardson do what Lamar Jackson did, what Justin Fields did, I just got to point out, Jamie, they, they didn't do that in their rookie years. You're asking him to do what those guys oh, did in their second years. Yeah. No, it, it's, again, it's, it's unprecedented. But, you know, I think, again, when you look at who he's being ranked around, and the position that we're talking about. And I'll say this, you know, I'll go back to the, the, the show we did about lessons learned. I'm falling for it again, the shiny new toy. Um, this is the position though you shoot for upside. The guy I was talking about was, was Trey Lance, you know, so you're, you're shooting for upside here. And you, and when you, when you compare him to, to Prescott and Watson and, and cousins and Gino and those guys and what they're capable of doing, those guys have a much safer floor. You know, Gino's got a new toy to play with on, on top of what he got had last year with Metcalf and, and Tyler Lockett. You know that Kirk Cousins is going to be in an offense that throws the ball a lot. He got a new toy as well. So there's lots of things to like about those guys if you want to take the safe route. I think it's easy to pair Anthony Richardson with someone that's still got plenty of upside. We saw Jacob Gibbs do that in one of our, I think it was our magazine draft, if I'm not mistaken. So that 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 draft you'll see on, on, on the shelves in your stores. But he took, I'm pretty sure he took Richardson and then went back to back and took Lawrence. 
And the question I asked them, because we do a, a, a Q&A in, in that format for, this, for the magazine, did you intentionally, did you make it a, uh, uh, were, was it your intention to draft two quarterbacks back to back once you took Richardson or was the value just too good on Trevor Lawrence? And he says he has, he believes that Richardson has a higher ceiling than Trevor Lawrence, but Lawrence has a, still a very good range of outcomes and a safer floor. So I don't think most people are going to go that type of pairing unless the ADP holds and you're taking yeah. Lawrence first right. and then you're getting Richardson later, which is certainly a rate, a great way to go if that's the way your draft falls. But most likely you're going to see Richardson with one of those quarterbacks past Dak. You know, I think you're in a great spot as well. Yeah. There's just so many quarterbacks who can give you 20 to 22 per game that we've already talked about. Dak, Deshaun, Cousins, Geno, Rodgers, Russell Wilson, Stafford might even be able to get you there. That's why I just have Richardson ahead of that group knowing that I can get a second one to go with him. You have to make that commitment on draft day. It's just like you said, Jim. You're shooting for the upside with Richardson, and you get somebody with a high floor later on. It's it's just easy. There, there are two quarterbacks that you really, I think, need to take a backup with, and they're going to go. They're going to probably be ranked in a similar spot. It's Tua and, and Richardson. They're back to back. Well, they're, you know, but you, that's the thing. They're ranked similarly, but this conversation is about ADP. No, so, the, again, I I think have, yeah, he is your backup, it, Richardson. He's not the. You don't have to take a backup with him. He is your backup. Right? Uh, yeah, and and if. If ADP holds, and that's what we see middle of August, and I said this yesterday, like I, I in the show that we did in regards to risers and fallers from training camp, I wouldn't be surprised if Richardson, and I had him as a faller initially because I was looking at rankings, but I wouldn't be surprised if there's people that are drafting him the way we have it ranked and targeting him as, as a top 10 quarterback. And then he has some stinkers in camp that people – the, you know, the, the media there says he's just off. He's not hitting, you know, his, his targets, whatever. Minshew's taking more first-team reps. You know the, the way this narrative can go. Mm-hmm. Or in, in any preseason action, if he does play, he looks awesome. And then 16 at ADP gets cut in half, and now he's being drafted as the number eight quarterback. Yeah. I don't think fantasy managers that are against taking two quarterbacks will look at Richardson. Because there's a lot of people out there, I only want one quarterback. I'm only drafting one. They'd rather save that roster spot for another position. Well, it's people that only have five bench spots. That's hard. Right. They're not going to take Richardson, or they shouldn't, unless it's like an eight-team league, and you know that guys like Stafford, Russ, Jared Goff, they'll be on the waiver wire. 